Hi, my name is Nathan Bailey from 3CX, and welcome to this VoIP Nugget. In this Nugget, I will give you a high-level introduction about SIP and RTP. We'll stay out of the details you don't need to know, and just highlight the useful basics and the principles. So what is a SIP standard exactly? SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. It's a text-based protocol, so it's easy to debug, and it looks a lot like the SMTP or HTTP protocol. The SIP protocol only sets up the phone calls. It's a signaling protocol between the SIP proxy, the phones, the providers, and the gateways. Once the call is set up, another protocol is used. SIP is defined in RFC 3261. It's the number one standard used by all major vendors, including Cisco and Microsoft. It's the telephony protocol of the future. So if SIP only sets up the calls, what takes care of the actual call? Well, the protocol actually carrying the audio is RTP, which stands for Real-Time Transport Protocol. Each call requires two RTP channels, one channel for the audio from each phone. A phone is also known as an endpoint in SIP speak. RTP is defined in RFC 1889. Each endpoint also requires a channel for RTCP, which is an RTP control protocol. SIP requests are sent out by phones and gateways to initiate some action. Here are some common SIP requests. A phone registers with a SIP proxy to let it know that it is ready to take calls and on which IP it can be reached. An invite is sent when a phone wishes to place a call. It's inviting the other party to accept the call. Cancel and buy are appropriately used to terminate calls. For each SIP request that is sent, there is a SIP response. Here is a list of common SIP responses. Notice the similarity with HTTP? For example, 404 when a destination is not found. Other important ones are 100 trying, 180 ringing, and so on. 3CX shields you from these messages since for every call there are many SIP requests and responses. However, it's still useful to know these codes as they sometimes show up on IP phones. And here is a sample SIP invite. Important fields are the request line URI, the to field, the from field, and the contact field. The request line URI shows the destination of the call. Here it is, extension 107 at 10.172.0.2. The request line URI contains the same information as the to field, omitting the display name. The from header field indicates the caller. The format is very similar to an email address. Where user is, for example, the extension number and the domain is the host name of the SIP server. Just like email, it's possible to include a display name in the from header. In our example, the display shows simply 101. Typically, the host part will be the internet IP address of the PBX server. The to header specifies the callee, i.e. the person that will be called. In our example, this is extension 107 at 10.172.0.2. The contact header field provides the exact place where the caller can be contacted to actually take the call. The difference between the contact and from is that the from address contains the extension number at the SIP server where the extension is registered, whilst the contact field contains the actual IP of the phone that must be contacted when the call is established. First we will look at the call setup for an internal call or calls placed over the PSTN via the gateway. These are both internal calls because they are all happening on the local LAN. In the above image you can see the call setup in diagram form. In this example, extension 101 wants to call extension 100. To do this, it will first contact the SIP server and ask for the call to be set up. The SIP server will contact extension 100 and set up the call. For internal calls, the SIP server only sets up the call. It does not deliver the audio. Consequently, since extension 100 and extension 101 are on the local LAN, the SIP server will organize that the phones will be connected directly. In this example, two ports will be used per phone. Extension 101 will signal to receive audio on 42016 with 42017 reserved for RTCP, the RTP control panel. Extension 100 has indicated that it will receive audio on ports 57158, so extension 100 will send audio on this channel. When the conversation is ended, the party that hangs up the call will send an appropriately called SIP BY request, and the call will be terminated. Now we will look at call setup for calls via a VoIP provider or to an external extension. These are different because the endpoints involved in these calls, that is the extension, are not on the local LAN, but rather on the WAN or the internet. Typically, these calls will proxy their audio via the PBX server. The diagram illustrates call setup for these types of calls, just as for internal calls, there are two RTP audio channels and two RTCP control channels. 
In this example, extension 144 is an external extension that is calling extension 107, which resides on the LAN. Extension 144 will use the PBX server to set up the call, just as for an internal call. However, note the difference in ports used when the call is set up. Because the PBX server sits in the middle, it specifies that extension 144 must send its audio to port 9012. The remote extension itself is using a high port 13882 to receive audio. Whilst the audio is being received, the PBX server forwards the audio on port 64050 to the internal extension 107 as specified by the phone itself. However, extension 107 sends audio back to extension 144 via the PBX server on port 7036. The default setup for 3CX phone system is to receive audio for the external leg of the calls, i.e. from a VoIP provider or external extension, on port 9000 to 9050. The internal leg of calls to or from VoIP providers or remote extensions is received on port 7000 and up. Of course, these ports are configurable, however, you can configure exactly on which ports audio is received, and this greatly helps in firewall configuration. I hope you found the information provided useful. You can find more VoIP nuggets and training material at the link provided, and we'll see you next time.